Now, uh, just three liver for uh, for our, our buying side. That's a lift. It's a dream leader, right? If I were doing one now, I would absolutely just do it in WordPress. It's it's free and it's easy, easy and it's yeah. They, there's so many plugins for it now that I wouldn't go back and build my own. No. But again, with the website, I don't want to get into site building, but don't give them too many places to go. Right. In charge now. What is that? Yeah, because it's sold. They don't have any data anywhere. There's plugins. yourself against a common enemy with them. Pick your glass in the way there, buddy. What's that? The glass. All right. I'm trying to, you know, this thing is blowing out such hot air, it's melting my ice. <laughs> I'm trying to keep going. Um, and more importantly, they don't care about you. They really don't. What are you going to do for me? And that, that sounds simple, but so many people write about me, I, my company, here's what I can do for you, blah, blah, blah. They don't care. My company's been in business since, you know, 1945. Nobody cares. W-G-A-S. Who gives a shit? <laughs> here's a good test for that. Count your eyes. When you're done with your sales letter, count the number of times you use the word I. Instead of you. Mike? I do have an exception to that one, and I got it corrected by a school teacher that I had mailed it to. It came back marked up and circled in red letters, and across the top it said 21, 22, question mark. It's all about you, baby. That letter that I bought the most houses from has 22 I, I'll, I. Oh, this was a sales letter, not a, not a school assignment. It was a sales letter, but a school teacher obviously corrected it with a red pen and circled every I, 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 and it said 21-22 question mark, it's all about you, baby. Uh, <laughs> okay. And that was your best performer. That's my best performer, so it flies in the face of that. And I did rephrase it to you, you'd, you'll, wheel, and I changed everyone in there that I could that really made the letter flow differently, and I didn't get half the response. But, uh, uh, right back to flying in the face of the rule. There you go. Uh, why? Count the number. Of, uh, count your count your eyes. They don't care about you. So we're going to talk about testing. Here's what I do. I just added this this morning as somebody was talking, and I started thinking. Test it in house first. So you write your draft of your sales letter. and give it to somebody else. Let them read it, however long it takes them, so I'll make them speed read it. This is what I do to my wife. I give it to her, I read it, and I take it away. And I said, I, I, I asked her two, two questions. What's the point, and what do I want you to do? If she can't answer those without going back and looking at the letter, I did something wrong. It should be that simple. Mike talks about giving letters to his daughter when she was in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Making her read them. If she can't understand, there's a problem. And my offers. Oh, and offers too. Yeah. So, what's the point? What do you want me to do? One, one read through. No, no setup. No, you know, no uh, free information before I give it to her. Just read this. What's the point? What do you want me to do? And then drop it. Drop, drop them in the mail. And see. How your results do. We're going to talk about measuring testing once they leave your office, but at least test it in-house first. Don't don't go. It's called sk skitoma. You can't find your own mistakes when you're when you're uh, in, in your copywriting. You need to give it to somebody else and let them. Get ready for media. Finish this sentence. Most people sort their mail over the trash can. Over the trash can. <clears throat> that means you've got about 15 seconds. Not even that. I would say, I would say 10. So that's what I wanted to say. To stand out in a pile of crap like that. 
you've got about 10 seconds to jump out and grab somebody's attention. Out of the, between the message market and the media, it's my contention that the media is the least important, the list being most important. Just get in front of them, just get it open. And the people, again, come up and ask me questions about our marketing, they just don't send enough. They don't just get in front of them, and they don't get it open. I did bring some samples to entertain your curiosity of stuff that we've sent out in the past or are currently sending. Um, just different envelopes. We have a do not bend stamp, and it doesn't matter that there's nothing in there that doesn't need to be bent, or that should not be bent. Pass it on. Yeah, just pass, pass it on if you would, please. Seriously, you cannot get this in the mail and not open it. It could be empty. It could be empty and you have to open it. You have to. February, December, that's a great one. Yeah. Love the million dollar bills. I love the shredded money. This is real shredded money. I think they're 30 cents a piece. I put a sticker on them that says, stop doing this with your equity. <laughs> Phone number and website. They may throw out the letter, but I'll keep that. Business cards. I don't carry them, but we do include them in mail pieces now. Again, your letter may get thrown out with everything else, but if they open that, Mag magnet too. it's kind of cool. We, uh, yeah, got the magnets. I got the magnet idea. I was back when I used to about meet with sellers. I was in this guy's house and his fridge was just plastered with magnets and from all over restaurants. Nothing interesting, but I thought people keep them. Are these for first mail or after? I'll get into that. And, and if I forget, remind me. But I, I, I have a section for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe Blackwell has a bunch of those now, too. Ask me, I'll get you his number. Hey, Ryan, what's, um, what's one of these envelopes cost? Ballpark. I can look at my database and tell you. <laughs> Ten cents or a buck? What am I closer to? To, to mail or to buy? To buy. This is a blank envelope. Probably in the 60 to 70 cent range. Okay. Um, I like these. I bought these from a, uh, a locksmith website. They're blank keys. You put them in a, a tube that rattles when they get it in the mail. It's because the tube's got caps on it. Put that in there with the sales letter. Makes you sense. know, unlocking your equity. Could be your, could be your tying your, your key to that. No. Key to your key to your equity. You know, so you have your, your message should mark, match the marketing piece that you're sending. Yeah. You're going to send a key and then say nothing about why you're sending them a key. Yeah. Here, here's my current favorite, and this is what our offers are going for when we actually do mail offers because Aaron didn't get them on the phone. Um, this is what our current offers are going out in right now. It's a bank bag, a real one. Zips, unzips, put your sales letter in there. Address with stamps. Seriously? Wow. Seriously. Um, That's expensive. But you can't get this with the, with the letter and postage in the bag. Less than two bucks. You can't get this in the mail and not open it. I don't care who you are. That bag is less than two bucks. Yeah. I just mailed out two of those. And does the, did you say the bag comes with postage on it? No. no. You, you got to stamp them, and it varies depending on weight and the, the thickness. One one thing I will tell you, if you are interested in doing this, under the zipper could open. Right? You, tape it. You, you have to tape the zipper down. The, the feature of that. So we put a piece of like shipping tape after it's all done over the corner there that that's got to be nailed down but it's not going to prevent anybody from moving in and this uh, is cake. our <laughs> our headline see we, we so we tie the the mailing piece to the uh the media or to the package um our headline that goes with that is let us help you build this bank bag faster and in there is you know, some sort of a follow-up letter or, or or actually the offer is going to that we have a, a cover letter that's going with that so I remember earlier when I did my marketing thing, I said get creative, but don't be obscene or aggressive or anything. So I mean, these are all kind of creative, neat ideas, right? Just to get, I mean, something rattled out. If you just get a random tube in the mail and you hear something inside, you gotta look. I mean, you not look to see what it is. And that's like similar to uh, the book called Outrageous Marketing. Yeah, yeah, book yeah. I'm, I, he's probably got those in there. This is one of the vendors for those. Why well, he sent me the big tube with the big old 50 caliber bullet in it? You can see that one? Did you guys get that one? Or is 
There's a oh, I, I got a bunch of with army men in them. Yeah, I, got, I would keep getting the army men too. But yeah, he had to send this big tube. It's about that big around, this big, this long, and then had a big 50 caliber bullet in it. Bullet. <laughs> yeah. Is that mail? Oh, you got to do that. Is yeah. mail? Yeah, it's the mail. Not real. Not real. He's doing crazy stuff. Very cool. But it worked. You opened it up to work, right? Yeah. So packaging, the, uh the shredded cash, I put that in an envelope where it's thin enough that they're going to feel, hey, this isn't just a letter, there's something in there. Um, hand address, we talked about that. It's, it's pricey. Not so much for handwriting letters. We do, we will hand, hand address stuff. Make it interesting. Make it noisy. I told you about the key and the and the tube. Uh, grabbers like the the magnet, um, the million dollar bill. That million dollar bill should really be attached to something, not just loose on itself, because there's no marketing message. Unless you, you should tie your you know your sales letter to that. Right. When you do uh, your magnet stuff, keep coming. What's that? When do you do your magnet? You know, I ordered like a thousand of them like five years ago. I, I, I don't remember. You, you just Google like mag magnet magnets or something. Yeah, they were they were super cheap. Those were like 18 cents a piece. But like I said, so I was at the seller's house one time and this guy's fridge was just plastered with magnets. And I thought, okay, people hang on to this stuff. And you never know when somebody's going to look at that and say, hey, now, now it applies. Uh, live stamps. Absolutely. I would never use full freight mail except on postcards because it doesn't really matter. But at least with the, the live stamps, you know, letter from grandma. That's that's, what, that's the, the look that we're going for. And be creative and stand out. This is the stuff that you are competing against. Again, just you know, keep this picture of this mailbox in your mind. This is what you this is what you need to stand out in. In what situation you use those expensive photos? I'm getting there. So here's another common question, letter or postcard? Depends. It's kind of right along with your, with your question there. Here's what it depends on. Are you mailing to a qualified list? Meaning, is there a list with obvious motivation or are you just fishing? So if you remember, we, so we, we talked about lists, right? We talked about if you took an NOD list and a bankruptcy list and uh, a divorce list and you merged all those together and out of those 10, 000, those list of 10,000, you got it down to 10, it's okay to spend money on those 10 people. I would send those people a $100 mail piece if I had to, each. I mean, we're talking like two bucks. So. The more qualified the list, if there's an obvious motivation like an NOD, you really want to stand out and, and they're, because they're, that is what their mailbox looks like, or used to look like. I don't know, you know who's doing mail now, but when the market was hot and people would get a go into foreclosure, that's what their mailbox would, would look like. So the more qualified the list, the more I will spend in getting their attention and getting them to respond. Uh, if I'm mailing to a general list, like absentee owners, I don't know that an absentee owner has a house for sale. Um, I know that an expired listing has a house for sale. They had an interest in selling. They already raised their hands. Yep, I'm interested in selling. It didn't work out. So I will spend a lot of money to get that person to call me. Um, but if I'm just mailing to like a general absentee owner, I want to spend as little as possible because I don't know if they have a, a problem that needs solving. Uh, they get a postcard. So bigger list, less qualified, less money. The uh, data provider you use right now, oh. currently using this. Uh, is that list source or which one you're using? For data? data? Yeah. Coming up. We like to And it also depends on, is it a tested list? Remember we talked about testing your list. I'm not going to mail that bank bag to a, a list, uh, a cold list that I just purchased and I don't know if it works. I'm not even going to mail that to the 10% the that I'm testing. That's the, the expensive pieces are people who it's either a very small list or we've already been in touch with. I'll spend a ton of money on our follow-up. But if I'm just trying to get them to call, just trying to generate interest, trying to you know fish people out, we, 
we, we don't spend very much. It's, that's more postcard kind of stuff. Even even letters we don't really do until they've called. So if the list has been tested, we've already mailed to it. We know it's responsive. More we'll definitely spend more per unit in get, getting the phone to ring on those. Here's the other part of that equation that uh, the list size. I when I uh, just this week I looked at our our database. There are 69,000 addresses in our database right now. That's a lot. I don't want to send, you know, the the bank bag or really anything uh, other than a cheap postcard to those people until they responded. And it also depends on the size of your marketing marketing budget. Do it wrong and you can go broke, and you won't be able to complete your campaign. You run out of money before you get the phone to ring. So I know show you how we budget for campaigns as well. So those are the factors of it as far as what we did. Pretty easy. Is it qualified list? Have you tested it? And depending on the list size and your budget, you should you know be able to figure out pretty easily which to which to send. And it's more about dollars, it's not so much about the what, it's more about the cost. And the postcards are the absolute absolute cheapest media to send out. So here's an actual return piece that we got back. Tendra. This is a, a Nixie with a bad address for whatever reason. Yes, that's a real name. Notice anything usual about this ma mailing piece? Unusual, you said? Yep. Anything stand out? Type. Type. Yeah. You would think. It's just a font. The red circle we actually do, that's not because it was returned. We, we started testing this. We had our, our girl who does our mail. She actually circles it with a, a red sharpie before it goes out. And uh, first name is not the uh, spell. No. Also good. So there's a name, but not a full name. A little bit of curiosity there. Anything else to stand out as being unusual in this return letter? Number 112 24. That's actually our mailing mailing address, but. Come on. Uh, Cross the bottom. Close, yeah. you're, you're cold. In-house track. We got it again. Okay. Um, that's not the four-digit extension of this. You're, you're cold. But geographically, you're cold. No, I was checking cold. So when we get our mail back. Did you ever play the hot cold game? <laughs> that's an in-house. Uh, Is that in-house tracking? Yes. The 8478. Yeah, that's right. not a that's not a four-digit to the zip code. Right. So the post office doesn't matter. They don't, look at the they don't really care about the, the last one. They don't even look at that. I would think the postcard knows what those are for. Uh, interesting. In-house tracking as well. Right, so each address in our system so is so unique. And is identified, at least in our system, it has its own number. So when we get the mail back, we're not searching for PO Box or 5153. I mean, with 69,000 addresses, it got a little cumbersome to try to figure out which, which one this went to. We type in the number, it inactivates them automatically. And that number can get up to, uh, we're up to five or six digits now. Nobody notices. It just looks like a four digit extension to, to the zip code. I thought that was kind of cool. All, all of our postcards that go out as well, we don't have to hide it as much because we, we want this to look like a letter, right? So we had to disguise that, so that's where we put it at the, at the end of the, the return address. And like you said, no, the post office is not going to look there. So, why? What do you try? Like when they come back, when they return? These are Nixies, yes. These are return mail. We want to get them out of our system so we can stop spending money on them, um, <coughs> or or we have somebody who researches them to see if they're they're good addresses or not. You guys can vote by name or address also. Yeah, couldn't you do it that way? We can vote well, by where we mailed it, the address of the property, the name of the person. We, we can pull it all of those ways, but when you get a stack of mail back like this every uh -huh. single week, you just want to put in a number. Got it. And that, that's all our, our system does now. It's just now it's just a data entry job. It's not it's not a, a hunt and find kind of. Okay. Is this it? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of sneaky. Yeah. That was cool. So how do you set up the number to automatically populate that for the next one? That, that's exactly what it does. But our, our database does that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's an auto auto number field, and so when we import the addresses, they each get assigned a unique address. Nice. And I guess do you use uh, access for that or? Yeah. 
access on the menu. And you, I don't, you can do it in Excel. You, you know, you just kind of put like one, two, three, and they would drag it down. And they would all have one unique number zone chili. Okay. So I would also would go back for them. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I noticed that, so I start using that now. Yeah, spam. Actually, to be honest, that's a little too perfect for me. I I totally yeah, put them on crooked. Crooked. So yeah. I put it upside down. Yeah, put them upside down. I, mean, I like them at like a, a forty-five degree angle on the, the corner of the envelope. <laughs> If you're using the American flag, the liberty, anything representative of our country, yeah. you better yeah. not put it on upside down. Oh, yeah. right. oh I got chewed time. out yeah. one time. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say that too. You, you could have a problem with that. <laughs> somebody, will, somebody will get offended. But you know, anything else? At least put it. I just follow this. For Disney characters. Very masculine, Ted. Very masculine. <laughs> I saw my mail get go to your house. I don't think we've ever, other than sending out. You know, bills. I don't think that we've ever used the, the standard, you know, American flag or whatever is current right now. It's it's always some sort of the, the caricatures or the, the theme stamps or the, they're they're bigger first of all and they're they're just they're different. So they stand out. Next on media. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> Band designs. Um, so as I was looking at this, <coughs> okay. bandit signs are fall into what type of marketing? Geographic, demographic, and it's psychographic. It's it is a bandit sign is a media, but what type of market is that going to? Specific, specific yeah. geographic. Where you? It's geographic, geographic. right? Okay. Nobody outside of that intersection is going to see tin sign. Right. So the fact that tin has a headline of, a very generic headline of, sell your house in 48 hours, pay cash, any condition, any situation, that's probably okay because he's blasting to just a geography. It's not niched down to, I only want people in probate that drive by this sign to call him. He wants as many people to see that sign who are interested in selling their house. It, so, the it's funny that he put that on two bigger pockets and they crossed on his phone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he did. Tom sent me, he's like, you can't use it here. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> so tin, in this case, tin has a market to media and message match. Even though it's shotgun, he, he has done the right thing in speaking to a broad audience because he's trying to appeal to a broad market through, uh, through the band of signs. Here's the dark side of band designs. Keep your cats away from this kid, according to Aaron. <laughs> this is what happens. Some, some people don't like band designs. And they'll tear them down and they'll call code enforcement. And your father and mom may or may not be on the border of getting arrested. It happens. You could put out band signs with your competitor's phone numbers on it and all the <laughs> obvious places. <laughs> 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 Here's how not to do band designs. So this is on a street leading to my house. The speed limit is 50 miles an hour, and even though it doesn't look like it, this is not an intersection. This is a driveway leading to nothing. It's not a corner, it's not an intersection. And this person was too cheap. Yeah, you're squinting, right? What, what, what does the sign say? Who knows? Because I'm doing 50 and I'm not slowing down to find out. Terrible, terrible example. She's even got three of them. You got one on the post and two over here. Small letters, cheap small sign. They're not even the 18 by 24 that really get attention. They're the whatever the next size down is. For some reason, I, I'm under the impression that this is a, a realtor woman or something trying to pull short sale listings. Poor example of banner signs. Aaron, you want to talk about banner signs for a minute and where to, where to put them? Like you yeah, I like putting them near stop signs. On on not in. I wouldn't put them in a. HOA community, I would put them in uh, uh, any community that has uh, like track housing where you want to buy houses. I like track houses; those are great places to put them. I put them. Uh, I don't. I don't like to do them at red lights. I like to do them at uh, you know where there's like a four-way stop Sunset. because people can stop and take their time. They don't have to go when the light turns green or anything. Uh, if there's a place where they they have to slow down and take a corner or something, you could put them there. 
but I really like putting them around the stop signs. I think those are the best places. If you put them on something like this, I mean, you can't read it, and even if you can, you're gonna have to pull over, get the phone number, and nobody wants to mess around with that. So, um, entrances to communities, I like those. Like, when I say community, again, I don't mean uh, an HOA community. I mean, uh, if you're gonna do HOA community, you have to put them outside, because they'll, they'll come after you, they'll rip the signs down, they'll report you. So, uh, neighborhoods, uh, not the major intersections with you know the four lane roads or whatever, but as soon as people turn off into the, the, the kind of the main roads leading into that community, I like those areas. I wouldn't put them on a street with all houses because again, people who live in those houses are gonna complain, they're just gonna rip them down. Your signs are gonna be up very long. I broke them down in my neighborhood all the time. <laughs> so, and, and not just those, any, any signs. It's in my neighborhood, I tear them down. I don't wanna look at that crap. I don't live there, so. What about entrances to retirement communities? Uh, yeah, I, we know people who buy 55 molar houses, so I would do that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking when they go into the retirement community, sell their old house. Oh, yeah, no, I like the school where the parents come pick up the kids and waiting, and they lift their out of the side. That's a good spot, too. Yeah, I, I in my where I live, I used to put them across from elementary school. Yeah, that's what across. My brother, creative guy that he is, came up with a whole new use for bandit signs. When he goes door knocking quite often and someone's not home, he will wedge a bandit sign in their screen door with a Sharpie, say, sorry I missed you, give me a call, an arrow and circle his phone number. He's also been known to show up at an appointment with a bandit sign under his arm as an icebreaker, shakes hands and says, let me give you my business card and hands him a bandit sign. <laughs> I, when I, in 2005 and six, I used to put him in the front lawns of vacant houses. So if the house was vacant, I put a front bandit sign in front. A lot of people called, like, "Hey, I want to buy that house," and I got that pretty roof. Oh, I got a title problem right now. I'm working on that, but you know, then I'd add them to the buyer list and try to find out who owned the house. So you already have a buyer. This vacant house, you got your sign in the front lawn. Nobody's gonna pull it out of a front lawn of a house except the owner. I, I did that, and I have problem with uh, people calling me trying to buy that. Yeah, so you say, well, I have a title problem, or as soon as we deal with that, the title problem is you don't own the house yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I, I said, you wait, I tried to buy that house. <laughs> no, I said, oh, yeah, I'm working on it. We got a title issue we're trying to clear up, but once we get started, let me get your new number, and I'll add you to my list, and then you, you already got a buyer lined up now, so. Which reminds me of the book, uh, Mitch Stevens' book, Stefan, whatever his name is, uh, My Life in a Thousand Houses. One of his techniques, when he sees an abandoned house and can't contact the owner, he puts a for sale sign in the front yard, but he also puts a question mark after it with his phone number. <laughs> which is a question to the owner, is it for sale? What's this guy's name? I've seen, I've seen my face in the front. Stephen. Business cards, you saw the ones that I passed around. Like I said, I don't carry them anymore, but um, I, we do include them in mail pieces as, as grabbers as something you know, if they throw out the letter, hopefully we'll keep that. So here's a good example of mail that sucks. Aaron says he brings, uh, said he brings things into the office and for, for us to review. This is, I think, a great example of bad marketing. It's horrible. So I want them to figure out what's wrong with that. No, it is, and that's kind of what we're gonna do. So with what we've covered so far, what sucks about this, this postcard? Adam Dickerson, you don't have to say, hi, Adam Dickerson. Yeah. Right? Or occupant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where, where does it say? Yeah, at the bottom. Adam did percent or occupant. So the well, headline. No head. Well, actually, what is the headline? The address. address. Property address. Yeah. Who cares? Is that gonna make me pick up the phone? Yeah. Speaking of picking up the phone, what am I supposed to do here? You got. Uh, there's no phone number. There's nothing. No. There's an address. It doesn't, even, it doesn't even tell you to do anything. Yeah. There's no. It's very. Uh, I'll, I'll read it to you, but there's. It's it's worded uh, very weakly. And there's no call to action. Yeah. Um, something else I wanted to point out here. I Hi, my name's Ryan. What's your name? Patrick. Hi, my name's Ryan. What's your name? Chris. Hi, my name's Ryan Scott. What's your name? Tom Cruise. Hi, my name's Ryan. What's your name? Like, who caught it? Yep. What is it? Middle name. Or I mean, last name. Middle name. Last name. Yeah. Why? You know, you said the first name, so they said the first name. So. Hi, Adam Nickerson. My name is Michael. As soon as I read that, stop. Uh, there's there's a disconnect. Yeah. I, I immediately felt it should be the other way around. Hi, Adam. My name is Michael. Or, or that. 
or I would do first name, first name, yeah. or yeah. full name, full name. Hi, Adam Dickerson. My name is Michael Ramirez. See, I actually shared a letter this morning that it was dear Mr. and Mrs. My name is Mike Cantu. And it was not a first and last name on their part. Oh, I guess it was Mrs. Mr. and Mrs., right? Okay. Some, something there. I just, that, when I started reading this to find out what was wrong with it, that was the first thing that stood out to me, aside from the sucky headline. Then when you write, uh, Mike, when you write, dear Mr. Is it Das, Mrs. or Mr. and Mrs. If I have a first name, I'm just going to use their first names. And I will send it to Joe and Barbara. My name is Mike Cantu. So here's 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 my uh, analogy in, in how this postcard made me feel. I, I have this, I've observed this tendency in myself. I'm a little slow in, in figuring things out. But I've noticed that when I'm talking to somebody who has had plastic surgery and it's bad plastic surgery, I, I just get uncomfortable. But I don't immediately recognize how oh, this person's really hard to look at. I just I just recognize that I'm uncomfortable and later I figure out, yeah, their face was kind of stretched out. It's the same with this postcard. When I started reading it, I just felt uncomfortable and I really had to sit down and think about why do I feel uncomfortable and it was that, so this this is what I figured out, it's the naming disconnect. You've got, it, it, there, to me that was immediate distrust. Yeah, I, I, I don't even, I'm so afraid of you that you're gonna find out who I am, I'm not even gonna tell you what my last name is. I'm just, I'm just Michael. I didn't like it. So that was one thing I thought was wrong. Is that a face slapping headline? No. no. Is it personalized? No. I don't I don't talk to people like that. I don't call Mike and say, Hi Mike Cantu, how are you doing today? No. So with that postcard you can't even get a hold of the guy. No, right. no, 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 no. We don't have a last name, there's not a phone number, there's not an email. I mean, I would hope it might be on the other side. But, you know. <laughs> There's nothing there to get all. I found that postcard. I'm like, this is the worst postcard I've ever seen in my life. He doesn't know what to do. You don't know how to get all of them. There's nothing. And, and you know, one other thing, as far as I'm concerned on this, um, especially if you're sending to older people. Can't read it. Yes. The, the small, small. small. Yes. yes. Very important. Very important. I would say less and make it bigger. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I counted seven eyes, and on a postcard, that's a lot. I might do seven eyes in a letter. I might do seven eyes in a two-page letter. I would not do seven eyes on a postcard. This is just a self-advertisement. That's all yes. it is. <laughs> and for some of them, they For some of them, they know anything else. Somewhere. Sorry, Michael, if this is yours. <laughs> that is not mine. <laughs> yeah. This is Michael Quarles, if that's Bakersfield. You know, that's what I think. He does bulk mail, oh, really? does yellow letters. Yeah. Yeah, I slammed that guy in VP one day. He wrote a sales letter up there. I was just like, this is the worst sales letter I've ever seen. But he apparently buys a lot of houses, but sales letters suck. And no call to action. I didn't see any discernible way to get in touch with this guy, even if I wanted to. Even if I wanted to call him and tell him to stop mailing me. I can't. This is actually my, I think he's going to be at the Bigger Pockets thing, and this is part of my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem with making fun of people in public. Like, this is horrible. Why does this suck? Um, Let's take a break before we get into the campaign structure and then um, we'll go through some more sucky mail and I think that'll be it. Cool. Yeah, that's the reason you want to get in the real estate. The first thing. No, 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 no